Lisa. You're in the loop. We're here to discuss the ups, downs, and sideways of the sport of figure skating and maybe give you plus five GOE along the way. Let's introduce this week's hosts. Hi, I'm Liv and I'm taking a break from stressing about university and study abroad applications to stress about teenage figure skaters. You can find my Twitter at Riverdance. Hi, I'm Yogita and junior dance is the only valid discipline. I take no arguments otherwise. You can find me on Twitter at Liliorum. And I'm Sam. I'm always ready to talk about the good kids just trying to do their best. You can find me at Quadlets with an E for Edge Call. Cool. Well, before we talk about the Junior World Championships, we wanted to instead uh, have a quick discussion about the state of the coronavirus and its impact on figure skating. I'd first like to ask um, what the Chinese Fed are doing. I'm just really sad that they knew that coronavirus happened, especially since this was right after Four Continents and the breakout was already globally known. But they sent Han Yan back to Beijing and had him quarantined instead of sending him to Canada like they did the rest of their skaters. That's bad, but it was the fact that he was on his Instagram stories being like, oh yeah, they haven't spoke to me at all. I understand that Boyang, Peng and Jin and Sway and Han went to Canada early to work with Laurie Nickel. So, like, I understand why they went to Canada early, but I also don't see how, if the CSA knew that sending Han Yan back to China after, especially because he was in Beijing, would make him go through the quarantine process, why they couldn't have just sent him over with the rest of them as well? Yeah, my issue with it, too, is, like, now that we know he's not going, is it puts them in a really rough position with their men's spots, because, like, Bo Young's been super inconsistent since the Olympics, and you're taking a huge risk that you might lose a spot instead of, like, maintaining them by only sending one skater. That doesn't make sense at all. And it's, like, the same thing with their junior skaters, and it's hard, I understand that, and the logistics of it was probably really difficult, but you, you had heads up. You could have done something. <laughs> Whatever spots they achieve at this year's Worlds will affect then the spots at next year's Worlds, which then affect the Olympics. It's like, it just, it just seems a bit risky. Yeah, and it's harder to earn spots than it is to maintain spots. And then that, plus just the eye issues, apparent just incompetence of making decisions. Yeah, let, let's talk about their worlds. It's the ISUs and Skate Canada's responsibility to be as frank as possible at this point about what they plan to do, how they plan to keep spectators and athletes safe when it comes to COVID, what the precautions they'll be taking in the arena are, where they even are on deliberations, like, about what's happening, and they've been radio silent, except for an email to Phil Hirsch from the vice president of ISU, Alexander Lerkinick, who, where he said that there are no deliberations at all. Meanwhile, in Italy, football clubs are having games without any spectators in the arena, and here in the U.S., the NBA has even, like, alerted teams that that's a possibility. Not to mention, like, tournaments being canceled, um, major festivals being canceled. Like, this stuff is happening in two weeks. <laughs> like, you, what do you mean you're not talking about it? The Ice Hockey Women's World Championship is happening in Canada, and it's been canceled. I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend and like that I know what they should do or what the correct answer should be. I just upset that there isn't more transparency about what's going on, considering the stakes involved not only for athletes, but also for for spectators who are traveling. Yeah, the ISU and SK Canada basically have till Wednesday to make any sort of decision around whether or not they're going to continue with Worlds or make it spectator free or do anything related to help preventing the spread of coronavirus. Um, but honestly, I based on the message from Phil Hirsch, it doesn't really sound like they've even started thinking about this. So who knows what'll actually happen. Four Continents mandated that anybody in the arena had to have a mask on. Yeah, and they'd done temperature checks. Yep, they were and then during breaks they were making announcements in multiple languages about where emergency doctors were for spectators. Um, where you could get, like, hand sanitizer and all that kind of stuff. Like, they were making everything very publicly available. Like, at least in the stream, I don't know what they did beforehand. Like, obviously, we were in a different situation then, and it hadn't spread as globally as it has now. But still, like, all the information was right, right out there in front of everybody's faces, and they had a blueprint for what they could do and had time to prepare for this, and it doesn't seem like they have. So, if 
Worlds does continue to happen. Uh, for anyone who is planning to attend um, Worlds, we just want to direct you to the World Health Organization's advice on public hygiene and hope that everyone manages to remain safe and healthy. All right, and with that, we're going to move on to the actual competitions. Starting off with pairs, our podium was Apollinaria Panfilova and Dmitry Rylov um, in gold, Senya Akinteva and Valery Kolosov in silver, and Yulia Artemeva and Mikhail Narashev all from Russia, which is kind of our jumping off point. Junior pairs especially is very dominated by the Russians right now. Apollinaria and Dmitry won by 20 points, and then the gap from like 4th down to fifth place was 10 points, which meant Anika Hawk and Robert Kunkel were the only non-Russian team who were even close to contention for a medal. I'm just gonna say, like, with Apollinari and Dimitri, I don't really have anything left to say about them. I've talked to them about them so often. They're flawless and seamless and, like, the class of the field right now. They move, like, through their programs pretty seamlessly, especially in the free. Like, their throw loop in the free is just so soft and huge and beautiful, and, like, the, t the twist is textbook. There isn't really anything else you can say about that. For me, the other team that was standout was Anika and Robert, because Anika is, like, so clearly somebody who's, like, way more experienced than everybody else, which she should be. She went to the Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, obviously, she's more experienced, but she just stands out, like, when you watch her, you can tell that she just understands, like, the more nuances of her program more than, like, some of the younger skaters do, um, which left me to believe that both of them probably should have been closer to third than they were, considering that they had a cleaner competition overall than both the second place team and the third place team. The reason they weren't is obviously tech stuff, like, their throws could have, um, more distance, they do get good height, they do not have the same level of jumps, because they don't do both triple jumps, and Anika is a better skater than Robert, but they just move, like, through their program more seamlessly, um, like, from element to element, instead of it being, like, a checkbox all the time, especially in their short program. Their short program is just, like, it's a senior pairs program. So, yeah, they were great. Yeah, but that being said, like, nobody else really stood out to me. That begs the question, like, what's going on with junior pairs right now? Because it's not so hot. Like, yeah, 20 points can seem impressive, when somebody's really special, which Apollinaria and Dimitri are, but it, in this case, I think it, it's more indicative of the fact that the pairs field is super weak. Yeah, 20 points between first and second, and then 10 points between fourth and fifth, and you, you continue to see, like, these large points um, in between all the rest of the teams. It makes me really scared about the future of junior pairs. It feels right now it's just, here's Russian pairs. And everybody else. If you look at Junior Grand Prix Final, it was five Russian teams and Annika and Robert, which is basically indicative of what the current state of Junior Pairs is. There are lots of other teams that I like, I enjoy. I enjoy the Chinese Pairs, Junior Pairs teams, but they don't have the technical elements to really be competitive right now. And it's making me pretty worried about as these Russian teams begin to move into the senior ranks, what's really going to happen to the rest of the Junior Pairs field? I do think there's like a key difference between a dominating force in seniors and a dominating force in juniors. Because in seniors, there isn't the same time frame whereas in juniors there is like an eligibility point where they have to move up which then if the, the dominating force moves up that leaves a spare space whereas seniors like obviously they'll retire at some point they can't just keep going on forever but there's not the same point where they have to leave which then doesn't leave the same gap in the field. Yeah, exactly. Like, I've used this analogy before, but it's kind of like the minor leagues in baseball moving up to the majors. Like, it's a, it's more of a feeder system than, like, a place you want to stay and be. There's always going to be the point where the real talented teams and skaters are going to transition into seniors, sometimes at the right time, sometimes at the wrong time. It's it's a waiting game to try and figure out when you're going to move up. <laughs> like, it, that's just how it is. Like, we'll talk, I'll talk about it later when we get to dance, but, like, it's a tricky game. And I think the major issue here is that not only is there this large gap between the top three, but I think if when you think about those three teams, even Apollinaria and Dimitri, despite the fact that I love them, when you think about them transitioning to seniors, they don't fit in there either. I don't think any of these three teams have the potential to beat any of the Russian teams that are currently competing at the senior level. And that's scary because 
pairs is already the weakest field as it is when it comes to participation, which makes sense because it's not as popular. It's a little bit harder to understand because sometimes people get like intimidated by it because they don't necessarily know what they're looking for because a lot of the elements are so different to the other disciplines. And it's just really hard to do. Pairs is hard. Yeah. It's scary, especially you're not only, if you're the guy, you're responsible for keep making sure somebody stays alive. And if you're the girl, you're being chucked into the air. Like, <laughs> that's just, like, it's just how it is. And like, I'm somebody who really loves pairs and I had a hard time watching this year's Junior Grand Prix. It's scary to think about how this is all going to shake out like four years from now when the field here is not producing athletes and teams that are going to be in the picture in seniors. Especially when you look when the senior teams that are currently competing begin to retire and move on and the junior field at the moment will then start to become the senior field. If the junior field isn't competitive as it is now, how will it be in seniors? Yeah, I think a huge part of this is just that lots of federations don't really have the money and the infrastructure to actually help train good junior teams and pairs. And there aren't that many good coaches for pairs to begin with. So you have a very limited scope in which you can first, like, send your pairs to be trained at and also take the effort to like try and build this infrastructure to build like a competitive pairs program it's also kind of sad to see when you see especially like a federation like the japanese federation where you have so many single skaters that not all of them can make the team if they would put more money and attention into trying to develop their pairs field and try if they could encourage some of their single skaters when they're obviously not now you can obviously force you to I need to go into pairs well that's like a, a one of those high cost low reward things like building a pairs the infrastructure to like actually nourish and grow and foster pairs teams is a long-standing program and there's little reward to it too because like i said it's not the most popular discipline like to put like to really put the money down into it you're basically you're doing it for a team medal like outside of china and russia it's really not important even here in the U.S., like, people care about pairs, but it's not the discipline, like, you're shooting for when you grow up. It's not their crowning jewel. <laughs> yeah, like, when you're a young kid watching skating, you're imagining yourself as a single skater, or maybe now dance, considering how strong the U.S. dance field is, but, like, you're not dreaming of winning pairs. Like, it's hard to convince kids to want to do it. Although, like, you could then make an argument that if your goal is to become a national champion, it's probably a lot easier to become a national <laughs> champion in pairs than it is dance. I feel like the risk of injury is a little too high there to want to push for that. Yeah, I, I guess it just all depends. Like, but there are people who, like, love pairs. Like, they're the Megan Duhamels of the world and badasses <laughs> who just want to be chucked. Like, there, there's a place for you. We just have to find you and put you into it. <laughs> Well, let's move on to junior men, where our podium was Andrei Mozilev of Russia in gold, Yuma Kageyama of Japan in silver, and Peter Gubinik of Russia in bronze. Neve, do you want to grieve first? So, one of the biggest news going into junior world champions was the withdrawal of Daniel Samsonov from Russia due to unspecified health reasons. They never really give a reason whether it was illness whether it was injury i really hope it's not injury and we we hope that he's okay and wish him a quick and safe recovery um hopefully we'll see him again on the junior grand prix next season okay let's talk about growth spurts for the junior men and we have to begin with steven gobilev he doesn't look like the same person we'll just be frank about that he looks like he's probably like a foot and a half taller than he was last year (laughs) but it, it, it he didn't just grow he also made some pretty big life changes by switching from lee barkel to rafael artunian and moving out to california and I think he's also had some injuries. He like he's missed Canadian nationals because of an an injury. And I think pointing to the growth spurt as a reason why he didn't do so well here is like valid, but also maybe not entirely all the reason because a lot of what's going on is that he's also changing his technique. The two most obvious jumps that I noticed were his quad sal and his triple axel. With his triple axel, he's doing a classic rough axel now. He's got a big sweeping curve into the axle before he starts to lean pretty heavily and hold on to that lean for a little while before he takes off into his triple axle. He used to have a quicker takeoff, so he wasn't 
leaning as heavily. He wasn't holding that edge as long as he is now, and he was doing more transitions into it. With the quad sal, a skater off the top of my head that like, looks like this is, again, Nathan, a raft skater, where he has taken out his transitions. He used to do progressive three turns into his quad sal in an upright. Now he is no longer doing those transitions. He is squatting more and his legs are farther apart before he takes off into the jump. And he's also doing them slower. He's really slowed down his takeoffs into his jumps, where last season he was moving more fluidly through elements. It's kind of the same thing with his skating skills. He has better edge quality, but he seems to be doing things slower. And I don't know if that's them slowing things down so he can be able to get his technique down to a point where he's comfortable and then they'll speed things up, or if that's, like, again, something to do with the growth spurt. So yeah, I think it's a little bit of give and take where, like, he's a young kid making big life changes and, like, changing his skating as he's also going along. I also heard that he also had some boot issues um, during this competition, too. So between the coaching change, injury, growth spurt, and booth issues. This really didn't work out to be his competition, um, but hopefully he will have a much better season next season. In the alternative, we have Peter Gumenik, who I also f- completely failed to recognize when I saw him first in the short program. I was like, who are you? Uh, but no, he also had a major growth spurt. And he honestly did so well here. I'm also extremely impressed with Peter because he does three sal cows and a triple etch, triple loop, double loop combo. So he has zero fear. He is the most fearless junior skater I've ever seen. Um, I bow down to him and whatever is going through his mind as he's decided that that was his layout. Yeah, I'm just super impressed with him because he's another one. You, you grow a foot and a half, but... He's kept his consistency despite the fact that, like, his jumps probably weren't technically the best last season yet either. The haircut is what threw me off here at Worlds because, obviously, I knew he was taller, but the haircut with the shaved sides, like, I don't recognize you at all. Where did you come from? Who are you? (laughs) Like, what's going on here? When he was shorter, he was doing triple axle, triple loop combos. He's never, he's not doing that. But I'm impressed that he's figured out what jumps still work for him and he can make it through his programs without major error um and honestly he's like such a good performer I like I said I loved him last season I thought his programs were so much fun and he was so entertaining and you can see that again here like he sold both of his programs to me like far and away like regardless of whether or not he jumped well or I think I would have still enjoyed all of his programs I honestly preferred his programs over Andre's and I probably would have had Peter win if I was on the judging panel but I'm kind of in the same boat I understand why Andre won like it was a deserved win but I don't know if he was my winner just because I think Peter again is more engaging is more interested in the music being played and his programs makes sense. (laughs) I'll just go ahead and transition right into Andre right now. His free skate is very Russian. What I mean by that is he has three completely different music cuts (laughs) that do not gel together. One is super percussive that he can angrily move his arms around to. The second one is Gangsta's Paradise, which my question is, why are we letting a white Russian teenager skate to this song? What could he possibly (laughs) relate to it? And then we throw in in this shirt just for the hell of a mood change. He is a very well-rounded skater from top to bottom. He has good skating skills. His jumps are pretty good. His spins are okay. He is not the best at any one thing. Like You can break down both in GOE and in components, and you can find a skater in this field that is better at him than one of those things. Like Yuma is class of field and skating skills. Shun has better jumps. Peter is a better performer. Like, just, like, stuff like that. Like, you can just go down the list and you got it. Despite all of that, he was winning categories he probably shouldn't have. Yeah. that See, that I'm also in that boat. Like, do I agree with Andre winning? Not really. Do I understand, given how everything went down at Junior Worlds? Yes. Am I confused wholeheartedly? (laughs) Let's move on to Yuma. Skating skills. Skating skills. Thank you. That's it. We're good. 
You mentioned a guy like a nine in skating skills. Like I don't, I don't care about his other components, but he deserves a nine in skating skills. He has that thing where you watch his back crossovers and they seem like they're happening in slow motion, like the Shoma Uno Patrick Chan like virtuoso skating skills like thing where they're like really getting that edge into the ice and it makes them like appear slow when they're really like accelerating. Like he's just moving so fast that it like everything seems like it's just slowed down in like perfect time you know what i mean yeah i like i said this on the last episode for four continents but yuma has like one of the best skating skills of both the junior and senior field currently and honestly he's not being rewarded for it currently at like in his components juniors are never rewarded for having like exemplary components i went off about this last year with camden like you need to be able to give them high components in the places where they deserve high components. Locking them in at an eight just because they're a junior is the dumbest thing in the entire world. It makes zero sense. He is not performing yet, but he has like quality of movement that is heads and shoulders above everybody else because he is listening to his music and he knows when to slow down and make things soft and fluid and when to speed things up based on what the music is telling him. Um, like, there's this moment in his step sequence in the short program where he stops, like, back by the boards, and he's, like, lifting his arm up when the note is a high note, and then he's leaning down in the next beat when the note is a low note. Like, it's just little stuff like that. And, like, the way he moves, like, through um, his choreography matches the sound quality of what you're hearing, which doesn't happen, like, at all in seniors, let alone juniors. So, yes, he is not at a point where he can emote out, but he is at a point where his skating is big, like, his chest is always open, and he's, like, elongating through his arms, even though he is not the biggest person. Um, like, again, like a Shoma thing, like, Shoma skates big, despite the fact that Shoma himself is not. <laughs> it, it, it makes a lot of sense. Shoma is one of Yuma's idols, and he very much uses him as a ideal way of skating. Unfortunately for Yuma, he failed to have like his best free of the season here, but he did have probably his best short program of the season. Um, I think I enjoyed this one more than the Four Continents one, where he had a quad. Um, and I thought the axle in this program was mwah, chef's kiss, which meant for me that I, the second I saw it out in my mind, I was like, he's going to mess up an axle in the free. And that's what he did. He, he messed up his axle in the free. So yeah, he also had two straight competitions where he skated clean freeze. It's like not having the clean free here was not completely unexpected because unless you're Nathan Chen, that generally doesn't happen many times in a row. So yeah, it's not completely unexpected that he wasn't clean here but still a little disappointing after the season he's had, that he, especially the second half of the season he's had. He's had an amazing season regardless. He's a Four Continents bronze medalist. What more does he need? Honestly, he's already proven he can beat seniors. Let's talk about our other Japanese man, Shin. And I've never wanted to go and like hug someone more than I did for Shin after his free skate. I, I was just heartbroken for him because he was heartbroken. It's, it's fine. He won Jinger Grand Prix. Who needs Jinger World? And despite the fact the mistakes on his quads, he landed two amazing triple axles, probably the best triple axles of the day. So, And with Yuma and Shin's placements, Japan gets three spots next se season on Junior Worlds um, and the maximum number of Junior Grand Prix spots, which is very exciting because they haven't had that in a while. So, especially and given how... There's a lot of fervor in, like, the junior men right now in Japan. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to see a lot more good, amazing skating on the Junior Grand Prix next season for them. Yeah, and I just want to give, like, a really quick shout-out to the fact that he's improved a ton since last year at Japanese Nationals, the first time I saw him. I was not super impressed with his skating then, and I've completely, the, like, done a 180 on how, my opinion of him because his skating skills are much better. Um, again, he's not performing, but, like, he's generally on his music pretty well like i said his jumps are absolutely incredible i like he's really 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 done a lot to be able to get to a point where i'm like maybe he should have been second going into the free his short program placement i think was more because he was in like the third group for the men's short overall i've really enjoyed watching shin this season i thought i think he's def as i as sam said he has improved leaps and bounds like even comparing his performance at like the very start of the season to now you can definitely see 
where he's tried to work on and he's taken like the judges like commentary back and trying to improve on obviously his spins and his step sequences he needs to be more careful and like pay more attention there uh, but he's definitely trying and these programs were choreographed specifically to help him learn how to perform i just really want to see him do something like like come out next season do something really out of the box because i do think like his personality shows out really well in the short I think and I I think the Romeo and Juliet just kind of works for juniors especially that are trying to work on their expression because the same way that all war horses kind of do it kind of gives them a storyline and concrete characters to play off and the music tends to be somewhat at least somewhat engaging to s- some members of the audience I just really want to see him like experiment with different styles and see what his getting suits the most yeah juniors is definitely a time for him to experiment he's definitely going to be on the junior grand prix again next season this was his international debut I guess a lot of people forgot that he didn't participate in the junior grand prix last season but he didn't but he, we'll definitely see him again, and hopefully we'll see him trying new things. I also, um, we want to talk about Maxim Nomov from America, who probably had the competition of his life. Of his life so far. He was one of the few skaters who had, like, two really good days, which was, like, especially in the free skate, was just nice. <laughs> he increased his personal best in the total by over 45 points. But I do wonder if he'll stay in juniors next year he is at the older spectrum of the juniors but i do think it's maybe worth for him to stay around for another year just because andrew Torgashev will be moving up because he's no longer junior eligible so i think next season's a good season for him to try cement himself as the top junior from the u.s senior man in Amer- in the u.s it's not particularly deep but it is quite crowded in competition for those like second third spots yeah i agree i think he he will probably stick it out in juniors for another season u.s men tend to stay in juniors for a pretty long time and that speaks to how packed their senior field is uh so i think having more staying in juniors and getting more international experience that he might not be getting in seniors will be really good for him. And it'll work out better for him world ranking wise because it's pretty unlikely that he'll be given he'd be given anything outside of a host spot at Skate America on the Grand Prix next season and either either way if he goes senior or he stays junior he's most likely competing at senior nats anyway and they can decide they could have decided to send him to junior world next year anyway like they did with Star Andrews. Star competed in seniors all year, but then was sent to Junior Worlds based on her placement at Nationals. So, like, he's probably better off staying there anyway, considering his end goal wouldn't be any different, necessarily, and he could get more points in juniors than he could in seniors. Also, talking about Andrei Torgashev, there was a brief shimmer of hope where I thought he was going to go clean and metal. <laughs> Very quickly ended as most of my shimmer of hopes for Torgashev go. <laughs> I feel like I feel this way about Andrew. Like every time I see him, I think, "Oh, you did really well in the short," and then he doesn't skate a free. The triple axle was so nice. The opening triple axle was so nice. I obviously had the fear that I have with all of Tortoshev's free skates, where it's going to go boots up and nothing's going to go well. And then the triple axle happened, and I was like, "Okay." Because he, str- he sometimes struggles with his triple axel, as most American men do. So he got the triple axel down, and I was like, yes, okay, this is happening. When I said I wanted K- Torg to, like, radiate Tomoki and Camden energy, this was not the energy I wanted him to radiate. You spoke Camden, and that, that was your mistake, Neve. <laughs> yeah, if you had said Tomoki, he would have been a surprise world champion. Why does this always happen to me? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Let's let's move on to the uh, ice dance. We have Avonlea Wynn and Vadim Kaliznik from the US in gold. We have Maria Kazakova and Gorgi Revia from Georgia in silver. And we have Elizabeth Shanieva and David Nerzny from Russia in bronze. Before we talk about how people at the competition did, let's talk about who wasn't here and Russia's bad decision making. So Russia decided to send Davis and Smolkin here over Elizaveta Kudaiberdieva and Andre. Filatov, which confuses me greatly. Elisabetta and Andre are a new team, but they had such a stellar outing on the Junior Grand Prix, and they finished uh, fourth at the Junior Grand Prix final over Davis and Smolkin's sixth place finish, and they have way higher scoring potential 
Russia made this decision based off of the Russian Junior Nats placement, and I think that they made a terrible decision in sending Davis and Smolkin because I think just Elizaveta and Andre, despite being a newer team, they're so charismatic together, and just overall, they could have been a podium contender, whereas Davis and Smolkin are not. Yeah, exactly. I was genuinely surprised that they were not on the roster when it came out. Like, I hadn't even put any thought to it. I thought that Elizaveta and Andre were 100% going to be there. Because, again, despite the fact that they're a new team, I actually think that this is a better partnership for Elizaveta than her old partnership was. I think Andre is a much better... He can stand next to her, which is really hard to do because she is so charismatic and in your face. Like, she's all, like, you can see every little detail on her face and how she's performing a program. And her old partner, he was good at, like, making her the focus, where this is much more, it's not necessarily equal, but it's closer to equal in for, in terms of, like, performance aspects. Yeah, yeah and this, this feels more like a part, an actual partnership than just, like, one person taking the lead. Exactly, and and I think it's not just that they had higher scoring potential, I'm pretty sure in both of their Grand Prix they were significantly ahead in total score than Davis and Smolkin were. And if you're taking into account body of work, that it doesn't make any sense. Oh, well, moving on to our, our gold medalists, Avon Lee and Vadim. And they did it. They did it. The children did it. The children did it. The saviors of USI stands. I still can't believe you slept for it. I'm so mad. I don't I even know how that happened. I was like, oh, I thought it was like going to take place like an hour later. And then I woke up and it was already over. And I was like, what did I do? What did I do? Maybe you just need to sleep for all of their performances and they'll win. You know, maybe if, if that's what I have to do, I will do it. <laughs> if this is precedent that I need to not watch them live, it's fine. I will never watch them live. They will win win everything (laughs) their free is just so magical and it just showcases both of them so well together i i I could like go on and on about how well choreographed and how well nuanced this program is compared to all the other junior free dances but it's just the best free dance of the season for both juniors and seniors i i take no criticism here (laughs) Yeah, and I 100% agree on the, like, this is the best program because it is a senior program. Like, I love, like, junior ice dance as much as anybody. I love all the fun programs people do, the, like, high energy, like, more modern stuff. But, like, occasionally, sometimes those programs aren't very cohesive. And they're fun, but they don't necessarily gel 100% element to element, where this is, like, one cohesive piece. Everything fits together, and it's there for a reason like there's purpose behind everything like that that curve lift in the beginning like like just look at it it's like literally like textbook perfect and it matches everything like Vadim's edges are like so solid and strong and like deep and then Avonlea's position and her toe point through it like it it's just excellent and I think like some like it gets lost sometimes how hard it is to have a program like that and skate it with nuance and skate it like performatively and which sets them apart from the rest of the field like by miles yeah all like all of their lifts are gorgeous i love their choreographic lift as well it's so stunning it's so well placed i would easily give it plus five goe none of the judges did but did we all knew judges are wrong probably what impressed me the most is that they got circular step sequence level four Avonlea only missed a level on the one foot step sequence other than that it was a completely clean protocol which we never see in dance ever i think so i'm just so impressed that they managed to see where they were coming from in the short they were third they were third after the short they came to this competition aiming to become world championships and they put it all together for the free and they set a world record and i'm just so proud of them I will say that they need to work on their twizzles. I've made the joke all week that I had a Vadim Your Twizzles me- um, tweet ready, waiting to go. Just in the drafts. I am curious as to whether or not they'll make the decision to stick around in juniors for another season or go seniors next year. They did say that their goal this season was basically to win everything, and they didn't win Junior Grand Prix final, so maybe they'll stick around another season just to win Junior Grand Prix final. But they, they're they really, they're a really young team uh, comparatively, so they can definitely stick it out in juniors if they want to gain more experience and get more international coverage before making the transition to seniors. Especially since Vadim isn't a US citizen, they can't go to the Olympics anyway, so 
it's not as if they'd be moving up to seniors to try and make their name for the Olympic team. Yeah, it's a real catch-22, though, because, like, if you stay in juniors too long, there's a potential you can lose favor if you start, like, not winning everything now that you've won juniors. But if you move up to seniors, like, exactly like you said, like, they're so young, like, they'll kind of get swallowed up by the U.S. field when you have teams like Hubble and Donahue, like, despite the fact that, like, their programs are not my favorite, like, skating skills-wise, in terms of power and speed, they, like, skate circles around everybody else. And, like, if you put them next to um, Avonlea and Vadim, it makes Avonlea and Vadim look a little bit smaller, and, like, you gen- despite the fact that they, I think, I, I would say that they're more special performers than Hubble and Donahue or, like, some of the other U.S. teams, like, you're making yourself not look as good as if you stay in juniors. It's a real hard gamble either way. I think that what, they'll probably stick it out again for another season and enter the seniors during the Olympic season, so when all the top teams will be preparing and might be skipping competitions in favor of preparing for the Olympics, and aim to maybe place at four continents where the top senior teams typically skip going to during the Olympic season. So I think that logically for me makes sense as the right move for them, but we'll see what they decide. Especially because at the moment, a lot of the American teams that are dominating in the American dance field, they are reaching the like older spectrum of their careers. So, like, it might be a good move for them to start preparing to try take over from them after the Olympics when those teams start to retire. Yeah, like I said, moving up to dance is a little bit different because, like, being older is actually an advantage. And it's kind of more like the thing, like, your parents tell you when you're moving from grammar school into high school that, like, oh, enjoy being on top now because (laughs) next year you're at the bottom. It's kind of, like, more like that than it is with singles where, like, singles, like, especially with ladies, you can go from junior world champion to senior world championship in a year like no problem doesn't matter that doesn't necessarily happen in dance so like taking more time and like really developing like skating skills for them especially like getting generating more speed and power and ice coverage um it will be as they get older well it's only going to benefit them moving on let's talk about kazakova and nervia i've just been so impressed with them this entire season with how good they've been on their pattern like They've missed a few key points here and there, but, like, they're competing in both juniors and seniors, so they have to do two different patterns, because obviously dance doesn't make things easy for anyone. Uh, So, overall, they're just such an impressive team for me this season, and I've been really proud of how well they've managed to do in juniors, while also still putting forward really strong performances in the senior ranks. For me, like, this is another team that I did a complete 180 on. I remember watching them last season, but I don't remember, like, being overly invested in how they did, but, like, being impressed that they weren't, like, a top-fed team outside of that. I was just kind of like, oh, it's nice that you guys are here, but it wasn't really like, oh, I need you to win for, like, now I'm like, I need you to do well. Like, I love you. I need you to do well because they're free. It's just so fun. I remember the first time it happened, I, like, lost my mind and, like, screamed at the TV because (laughs) I was so surprised at what they were doing and, like, the cartwheels were, like, one of those moments where you're like, whoa, (laughs) what's going on here? What are we doing, guys? But, like, just, like, was awesome. Again, it's, like, one of those junior programs where, like, junior dance is more fun. It just is. (laughs) This this is one of those programs that's just more fun and more athletic than sometimes what we get in seniors. I just think it's also a pretty unique program, even for juniors. Like, yes, junior programs are very fun, but you don't see any other junior team doing anything like they're free. It's so unique and edgy, and I don't think any other team at the moment could do it other than them. It's like just kind of the way they perform it, I think, is just kind of like one of those programs that like it's always going to be their program. They're definitely moving up to seniors next season. They were mainly staying in juniors to just help improve their world ranking, but after this, they'll be 100% full-time on the senior circuit um, and hopefully going forward to make a statement before the Olympics. Rounding out our podium, Elizaveta and David, who were the only junior team to break 70 in the rhythm dance this season, so props to them. I thought they were technically excellent in the rhythm dance. They were probably, of everyone here, the most technically proficient dance team. I 
do think that some of that strong technical excellence c- came at the cost of some of their performance. I, I put a, would have actually put some of their components a little bit lower in the short, just because I've seen them perform this program with a lot more energy and enthusiasm. But overall, like, props to them for getting the job done. Yeah, I would say they probably had the best skating skills of the top three pretty easily. Unfortunately, like, they're free is one of those programs that's, like, probably not as cohesive as it could have been in favor of, like, trying to be edgy. Um, it's still a good program. Like, I liked it. I think they changed it a bit, actually. I think the edit of the music is a little bit different than it was earlier in the season. I think it might have lost a little bit of its effectiveness because of that. But overall, I like this team. I'm just... Not necessarily, like, over the moon when I watch them skate. Like, they're not a team that I'm, like, I need to pay attention to, like, every little detail and nuance of what you're doing. I just, like, overall enjoy it. So, yeah, let, let's talk about one of our favorites, um, Utana and Shingo, who have the best twizzles of the juniors. They have better twizzles than a lot of seniors who are, like, meddling seniors. <laughs> <laughs> and the crazy thing is, is not only is this their first season, but Shingo is still doing singles. I don't understand Shingo. I really don't. I mean, you know what? I'm just impressed. Yeah, I mean, they're so well matched. Like, the synchronicity between, like, in all of their elements, not just their twizzles, is, like, masterful. Like, these guys were meant to skate together. Yeah, I would I would honestly give a, a lot, them a lot more GOE on their elements, but unfortunately, I stance as a heavily political discipline, and they represent Japan, which has very little politicking in I stance, so I, I can only hope that they'll manage to get some more help from the JSF as they continue to proceed through the junior ranks. And also, dance is also pretty heavily influenced by who you have as your coach. And Utana and Shingo train at uh, Toronto Cricket Club, which, while being a very well-known club for single skating, hasn't really had a lot of breakout ice dancers, so they are kind of losing in both politicking baskets right now, but I have such high hopes for their future. Yeah, and important to point out that they place the highest of any Japanese junior dance team at Junior Worlds. It's definitely, like, on the way up instead of, like, trending downward. Also, they have the benefit of not having a very deep senior field as well, which will make their move into the seniors a lot smoother than, for example, an American dance team or a Russian dance team where they'll have to battle with the already competing senior teams. And this was their first season, so we'll definitely see them continue to rise more in the upcoming seasons. And they'll just get more and more exposure. And they're definitely taking the, the opportunity to go to as many competitions as they can and become the best performance that they can so i don't know i'm just really excited for them they're so so adorable shall we move on to our last discipline ladies so the podium for ladies was camilla valieva of russia daria ushacheva of russia and Alyssa liu of the us so here's the thing ladies is the discipline that has shown the most scoring escalation since IJS started, particularly from 2014 until now. I think a great example of this is Yuna Kim's skates at the 2010 Olympic Games versus somebody like Evgenia Medvedeva at the 2017 World Championships. Um, In the short program, Yuna, who skated the best that anybody had at that point, got zero threes given to her in her short program for any of her elements. Not a single job gave her three. For Evgenia at the 2017 World Championships, in her short program, she got 13. And I don't think anybody would say that Evgenia Medvedeva is that much better of a skater than Yuna Kim was at the 2010 Olympics. Now, a lot of that it just is that as scoring systems progress, this happens in gymnastics, gymnastics changes their scoring system every four years. And the first year of the scoring system, it's always a lot harsher than the last year of the scoring system at the Olympics. That naturally happens as something stays on, like the judges get more lenient. It just happens because they want scores to get higher. But ladies is at a point where there isn't anywhere else to go, and it happens for particular skaters. Yes, we are talking about the Sambo 70 at Terry Tuarice skaters. And the issue for me is, yes, they have higher technical content, but the rate at which they are given GOE compared to other skaters doing the same element 
is not the same. Take, for example, somebody like Hyun Lee, who does an excellent triple-triple, versus Camilla Vallevas in the short program here. Camilla's GOE is higher than Hyun's, despite the fact that Hyun is technically doing a better combo. Um, Camilla had a mistake, and they're dead even anyway, which shouldn't happen and doesn't really make sense, which leaves us at a point where nobody can compete with them because they're scored on different spectrums. It's just kind of the question of, like, obviously I understand why, because it all comes down to politicking, but, like... It doesn't, it doesn't. I mean, I think a lot... I don't think a, a lot of this is actually, like, aggressive politicking. I think a lot of it has more to do with reputation at this point, where they see... They see the coach's name, and they just decide that they understand, like, the quality of the skate. So they they just naturally, like, give more benefit of the doubt than they would to somebody else who they don't know. But yeah, Camilla is, like, an excellent example. She scored 74 in the short program, and she did have, like, some mistakes in her loop and her combo that should have gotten her much lower grade of execution, but compared to other skaters who, if they made similar mistakes, probably would have gotten negative DOE. Camille did make mistakes on her loop and her combo, but I don't know if they were that obvious that somebody else would have gotten, like, automatic GOE. Like, the loop especially, it was kind of just an air position issue. Like, her landing was okay. Um, I don't think it was enough to be, like, minus two, maybe, like, a zero or a one. The combo, though, that one I'll more agree with you on, because, like, I think it was super impressive what she did, because she landed back on her heel, but she held that thing, like, her life depended on it, and, like, the core and glute strength it takes to, like, fight off what she fought off is, like, so impressive. But it shouldn't have gotten positive GOE. That one was more obviously, like, yeah, somebody else probably would have gotten negative GOE. I think the loop was probably okay, but, like, I'm more annoyed that she got a personal best. I don't understand how you get a season's best when you so obviously skated it better before, and I think that's the issue where i'm at it just doesn't give them anywhere to grow yeah and it's not a situation it's not a situation like mikhail Koyata and adam rapan at the olympics where like people were complaining that adam wasn't beating Koyata, despite the fact that Koyata was having mistakes like when they watched it because they didn't understand like the scoring system like this is different this is like legitimately like people who are doing the same things are not being given the same credit like because you have a triple triple two triple triples in the back half of your program and you skate for a certain coach, like, you're given a benefit of the doubt that nobody else does. Because, like, Evgenia in 2017 would have been competitive with Sasha, Aliona, and Anna this season. Like, and doing triples instead of quads. Like, it didn't matter that she wasn't doing the same technical content that they are now. Like, she would have been scored, like, within range, where nobody else was even close to it. Like, they can make mistakes that other people can't and still win which shouldn't happen, and that shows that the scoring system is in an unhealthy place and that something needs to change. I, I, I agree that the scoring system does need to change. I don't know how we would go about, like, enforcing this change. Judges will still be aware of the reputation of their skaters and who their coaches are, and it's really hard to shift off that mentality, especially for the judges. This happens in other disciplines, too. I'm not going to sit here and say that it doesn't. But the rate at which it happened in ladies, to the point we're at now, where I feel like sometimes the competition almost isn't worth having because you know what the end result is going to be, no matter what happens, um, doesn't necessarily happen in the other disciplines, I think. It makes it really hard to enjoy ladies. And I love ladies. I think they have, like, such great skills, such amazing programs. Not just the Russian ladies, but, like, ladies across the board. They all are extremely talented. They trained really hard to get to where they are in the sport. And just the way that they're being judged kind of, like, puts this negativity on them that they don't deserve at all. Yeah, ladies is the reason why I... I started watching the sport when I was a kid. Like, I'm only here because of Michelle Kwan, and, like, I have a hard time watching it now because it makes me mad, and that's really sad because, like, that was the discipline, and now it just kind of feels like it's in a place where I can't fully enjoy it. Let's move on to how the ladies here did. I'm sorry, when our gold medalist, uh, Camila Valieva, who, to no one's surprise, was the runaway victor of this competition, as we discussed, there was some, like, issues with her short, but she still got a, a season's best, because why not? I understand Camilla the same way I understand Andre Mozilev, in that, compared to the other junior ladies, yes, Camilla is very much better in terms of, like, skating skills and transitions. I don't find her 
as interesting a performer. I think her programs are too heavy for her. But like, as, as I said, I understand why she won and why she's getting the score she is, even if I don't agree. I understand why she won simply because she was the cleanest in both programs. Um, that said, I do not understand why she won the short. I think that's the one, where I'm at. Um, because I think, well, she's very good her programs are not. I think she could be, like, fabulous if you gave her better material, but the problem is she's got, like, kind of cookie-cutter Sambo 70 programs that are super heavy um, and kind of, like, paint-by-numbers, like, now you extend your leg and you will hold it for 0.5 seconds and then you will move on into another thing. She, she also broke 150 in the free with a mostly clean program. She had to step out on the quad, but not that that's the world we live in now where juniors are are breaking 225 points. Let's move on to Alyssa, who is the cutest being in existence. Um, I'm going to miss her short program so much. It's so cute and bubbly and fits her personality so well. Yeah, like like we were talking about with Camilla, where like her programs are super heavy. Both of them, I think the short more than the free, but both of them take into account her maturity and natural charm, which doesn't necessarily always happen in juniors, but, like, it's so refreshing to see because her smile, like, lights up an entire room. She has so much personality. She has the technical elements, although she has a few under-rotation issues, but she still needs to kind of work on a lot of the components because that's kind of where she's lacking in comparison to the Russian ladies. So I do think they can use her personality to dive in to that to help her get some more of those performance-based components, which I think they've done really well this season, especially with her short, because it is so bubbly and it is it just kind of makes her emote, if that makes sense. Yeah, I agree. I think for me, like, it's less the performance because I think when she has the right program, she, she can perform and be and play her strengths fairly well. Um, I definitely think what's missing for her are just, like, those really key base skating skills. And she's definitely improved a bit compared to, like, the Russian ladies and, like, the Korean ladies. She still isn't at their level skating skill-wise, and it's very obvious based on um, how, when you compare a Russian lady to Alyssa, she, just, like, speed-wise, Alyssa's a lot slower. Part of that has to do with just how small she is, but uh, it takes her a lot more effort to move across the rink, um, and just being able to do that more naturally and more easily will help her a lot in the future. She is working with Lori Nickel on her programs and her skating skills, so the idea that she can't improve, I think, is kind of ludicrous. Um, I think she will, because she's risen extremely quickly from, like, not even competing to juniors to being a senior national champion. So I think sometimes people put a little bit too much expectation on her in comparison to other people instead of just watching her own natural progression. What I'm trying to say is that she's not somebody who's spinning her wheels doing the same thing. She's somebody who's doing what she can now in order to make improvements later. I agree wholeheartedly. Comparing Alyssa this season to Alyssa's last season, I think you can definitely see where she's focused and has made improvements. And I think just the decisions that they've made choreographically, just like where she herself is like putting herself self out as a skater I think she's just gonna keep improving whether it's at the rate that we want to see her improve who's to tell I know that she will be senior eligible the year of the Olympics so I know that the USFSA will probably try and rally behind her to become a senior that year to make the Olympic team so I just hope that she does she isn't under too much pressure from the U.S. Federation to improve too fast and overwork herself. Yeah, and she clearly has a good head on her shoulders and is capable of handling where she's at now. Like, I think I was worried in the beginning of the season that this would be hard for her, considering that she had never competed internationally, like, majorly before, but she handled it all with grace and was totally fine. The quad Lutz was a struggle, but other than that, like, she just kind of went through the season as she does with anything else with a big smile on her face that's all that matters ah <sighs> do we have to talk about tomoe <laughs> i personally thought they should have sent her to four continents after her placement at japanese nationals where she got bronze and i stand by that despite her finish here because i think she's someone that just needs to learn how to compete 
and in order to learn how to compete, you got to do it a lot. And I think putting her on bigger stages when you can makes sense. And she has competed a lot. Like, this is her second competing the whole way through from Grand Prix to Junior Worlds. So I think she, it's not like she hasn't competed. It's just putting her on bigger stages so she get used to the nerves. And is it mistiming her jumps will only benefit her going forward because she she is so talented. She's another one where the skating skills are incredible and the quality of movement is heads and shoulders above everybody else. And we deserve to see two clean programs from her more regularly. She just has such a matureness about her skating, which kind of makes sense considering she is one of the older juniors, especially in the ladies' field. But it just makes her skating so lovely to watch, even if I don't particularly love her programs this season, just because the music she chose isn't really music that I can be engaged with but that's just a personal issue that's not anything against that's not saying her programs are bad but she's proved that she can hold her own with the senior Japanese ladies who are at the top of the field so I do agree with Sam that I think it's a confidence issue now and she just needs to get more competitions under her belt. Yeah I hope next season they send her to more senior B competitions uh, just to get her more out there Um, and just to get that experience competing. She definitely has such a large amount of talent. When she lands her jumps, they're gorgeous. She just needs to learn how to land her jumps in a competition. (laughs) Let's move on to Hayen. She is so good. She is one of the best junior ladies out there right now. She has, like, everything. She has the skating skills. She has the jumps. She has, like, strong programs. What more could you ask for from a junior lady? Yeah, and they're programs with highs and lows. Like, she's, like, lowering her plane, like, like going down to the ice, coming back up, like, moving her body in different ways that um, just make a more complex program than some of the other skaters. She, she's doing the junior performing thing where, like, she'll come in and out of it a little bit but I think like she's just so much stronger and everything else that it's not that big of a deal and like I said I I would have her first just purely on the fact that I think her PCS should have been higher like let alone the GOE on her jumps. Yeah it's it is heartbreaking what happened with her flip combo in the free but she still went out she did her she did what she needed to do her step sequence in her fire dance program is one of my favorite step sequences of the season um and she really just like gave it her all and even though it wasn't what she wanted so between her and so young's placements they got three spots for korean junior ladies at junior world championships next year so that's gonna be really exciting for that entire field Um, And honestly, I just want to speak to Korean ladies as a discipline overall. Like, they've grown so much over the past few seasons and have become one of, like, the the top-of-the-class set of ladies. We have such strong senior competitors right now with Young Yoo, Yelim Kim, and Soo, and we have all these strong juniors waiting in the wings as well. Um, And I'm just so excited to see how they progress through the next seasons. I always just forget how young Hyun Lee is, just because everything about her skating seems so put together in ways that other skaters aren't. So like, sometimes I just kind of forget she's still 14. But it is really interesting to see the influence Yuna has had on Korean skating, just because there's so much talent in singers at the moment, and then so much talent coming up in juniors, as Yog said. Um, But just even just with young winning silver at four continents it's like it's really interesting to see how things will progress from here moving on to another amazing korean lady uh soyoung who put out two really well done programs i am so proud of her i probably would have placed her higher overall she has edge issues on her flip so which kind of confused me why they would put two flips in her free when they know she has edge issues on that jump instead of doing like a second sal cow instead uh given that she has this reputation she would score more points doing another sal instead of doing the flip so it might be so she can like get used to competing it maybe like i'm trying to think of reasons why you do it like one obviously the points if you actually like get the benefit of the doubt and they give it to you you get more points but also like i think maybe maybe her edge issue is something they're working on so they're putting it in program more so she has more opportunity to like get used to in competition i don't know that's an interesting one i always wonder about that like especially at this stage 
where, like, you can work things out a little bit more than you can in seniors. But yeah, it's so Young's uh, Free Skate is to Amelie, which t- always, for me, will bring me back to Calder's, um Amelie program, which had, like, this really playful element to it that I kind of felt was missing from so Young's interpretation of Amelie. But, like, these are more performance focus aspects that she'll get to as she matures, gets more comfortable competing, and finds programs that are better fits for her personality and her style. But overall, she also had a really great junior season, and I'm so excited to see what she'll do next season. Moving on to Ekaterina Kurekova, who is another one like Alyssa, who just has such such a special like charm about her and just natural personality on the ice. And it's just really lovely to see, and I'm really sad because her components should be higher, and she just never gets them. Yeah, she's special in any field. And it's a shame that she doesn't get rewarded for that because, like, most seniors don't even have the wherewithal to, like, continuously perform like she does. She is absolutely lovely. I hope she continues to perform with such, like, freedom and expression and enjoyment as she moves through the ranks. Okay, lastly, let's talk about Mana, who also did not have a good time here, but she did do a triple axel attempt, which did not really work out, but she has landed in the past, so hopefully we'll see more of it in the future. Her triple lutz, triple toe in the short program was just so easy looking and lovely. She reminds me of Wakaba a lot. Like, she just motors down the ice, and her jumps are, like, so powerful and, like, huge. She's so fast. I loved watching her just, like, accelerate, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. It was just really impressive. She skates to the Grinch, and honestly, I feel like all skaters should skate to the Grinch. It was a, like, jamming version of the Grinch, too. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a jazzy Grinch. I love it. It's like, make Grinch a year-round movie. So, let's move on to our shout-out of the week. Our shout-out is Adelina Sotnikova, who officially retired, despite the fact that she hasn't competed <laughs> in a really long time, but... I would like everyone to go watch her final competitive free skate to Just Swim Alad, which is one of the most iconic programs to ever come out of IJS, and I am not being ironic or sarcastic with that. I mean it 100%. If she had skated that the Olympic season, we'd all think about that Olympics differently, let me tell you. <laughs> go watch one of her final performances of that, and just like, good luck, Adelina, with whatever you're doing now. With that, thank you for listening. We hope to see you for our next episode. Thanks to our transcribing and quality control team, Evie for editing and Gab for graphic design. If you want to get in touch with us, then feel free to contact us via our website at inthelowpodcast.com or on Twitter at inthelowpodcast. You can also find our episodes on YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Spotify. You can find our merch on Redbubble, which will be linked on the website. If you enjoy the show and want to help support the team, then please consider making a donation to us on our coffee page, and we'd like to give a huge thank you to all the listeners who have contributed so far. You can find the links to all our social media pages and our coffee on the website. And if you're listening on iTunes, then please consider leaving a rating and a review if you enjoyed the show. Thanks for listening. This has been Neve, Yogita, and Sam. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. Bye.